Tonight on SUTV World News, North Korea announces they're pulling out of the Summer Olympics, and Vladimir Putin is staying in power for at least another decade. That and more right now on SUTV World News. Good evening and welcome to SUTV World News. I'm Adam Beam. It's been almost two years since fire ravaged one of the world's most iconic structures. On April 15th of 2019, the world watched in horror as Notre Dame spire came crashing down. What took 182 years to build, starting in 1163, was largely destroyed in just a few hours. Much of the cathedral's integrity stayed intact despite those flames. Crews have spent much of their time since then making sure it stays that way. The church's massive vaulted ceiling is currently being supported by wooden pillars in case the stones give way. Work to begin rebuilding that ceiling and the spire is expected to commence later this year. More than $1 billion has been raised from 150 countries to restore the beloved building. Iran says the latest efforts to revive the 2015 nuclear deal were constructive and that another meeting is scheduled for Friday. Iran held indirect talks with the U.S. in Vienna on Tuesday. They didn't speak face to face, but they did communicate through European intermediaries. And officials are calling that first session a positive step. For more, Fred Pleitgen is in Vienna. Talks are underway here in the Austrian capital, Vienna, to try and salvage the Iran nuclear agreement. Now, the first day of negotiations was described by the Iranian chief negotiator, the deputy foreign minister, Abbas Arakti, as being, quote, constructive. That's according to Iranian state media, but all sides agree that making headway is going to be very difficult. And one of the reasons for that is that these are not direct talks, but indirect talks where the negotiators from the United States and Iran are not going to be seeing each other face to face. Instead, the Iranians, for the most part, are negotiating with the remaining nations in the Iran nuclear agreement and then keeping the United States abreast of what sort of progress is being made and what could possibly happen in the not too distant future. Now, the two sides are still quite far apart as to what exactly they expect from one another. The Iranians are saying if the United States want to return to the Iran nuclear agreement, they must abide by it immediately, and that, according to the Iranians, means immediate sanctions relief. The U.S., for its part, says before it's going to take any steps, it wants to see the Iranians come back into compliance with all of the protocols of the Iran nuclear agreement, and only then will there be sanctions relief on the part of the U.S. So there are still deep gulfs between these two countries. However, one of the things that the both can agree on is that both want to salvage the Iran nuclear agreement and try to move forward from there. Fred Pleitgen, CNN, Vienna, Austria. North Korea is bowing out of the Tokyo Olympics over concerns about the coronavirus. North Korean media cited the decision was made to protect players from the pandemic. Officially, the country has not reported any coronavirus cases, but in recent months there has been an exodus of foreigners due to crippling restrictions and dire shortages of food and medicine. In 2018, Pyongyang sent 22 athletes along with government officials, performance artists, journalists, and a 230-member all-female cheering group. This year's delayed Olympics are set to be a more muted affair. They are slated to begin July 23rd and go through August 8th. Russian President Vladimir Putin has signed a law paving the way for him to run for two more presidential terms. That's according to a document posted on the government website Monday. Putin is now on his fourth term, set to end in 2024. The new law can not potentially allow him to stay in power until 2036. CNN got access to the first full view of the deepest shipwreck ever found. A U.S.-based crew has mapped and filmed the entire wreckage of the USS Johnston. It's the first complete survey of the site. The World War II U.S. Navy destroyer has been resting about 6,500 meters in the Philippine Sea for nearly 77 years. It sank after losing a key battle with the Japanese Navy. Ivan Watson has more from Hong Kong. This is the world's deepest known shipwreck. Located more than four miles or some 6,500 meters below the surface of the Pacific. The numbers 557 identify it as the USS Johnston, filmed for the first time underwater by a remote-controlled submersible. 
This destroyer was one of several U.S. Navy ships sunk battling a vastly superior Japanese fleet during a furious battle off the coast of the Philippines during World War II. These little ships, fighting a desperate battle for time, used everything in the book to stay afloat. How did you feel seeing the ID numbers of the USS Johnston? In a way, it's um, painful, uh, but in another way, it's inspirational. Former U.S. Navy Captain Carl Schuster says he and his fellow officers studied the story of the Johnston and its commander, Ernest Evans, the first Native American naval officer to be posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. He moved without orders. He saw an imminent danger to the fleet, and he moved on it on his own authority. Evans bought time for vulnerable American transport ships by attacking a fleet of 23 Japanese warships, his actions started a charge, if you will, that ultimately saved several thousand American lives at the cost of his own and, and much of his crew. 186 crew members, including Commander Evans, died aboard the Johnston. The Johnston was mapped by Caledon Oceanic. Over the past decade, several other World War II wrecks have been discovered in the Pacific by expeditions led by the late Microsoft co-founder, Paul Allen. Navies around the world treat these sites as sacred war graves. I see them as the tombs or cemeteries of brave men who died fighting for their country, whether they're German, Japanese, or American. The mapping of the USS Johnston brings some closure for surviving relatives of the ship's crew. A grateful people will remember their name. The Gambia Bay, the USS Ford, the Johnston the Samuel B. Robert. But the final resting places of the three other ships sunk during the same deadly battle have yet to be found. Ivan Watson, CNN, Hong Kong. And that's it for SUTV World News. I'm Adam Beam. Be sure to follow us on all our social media at SUTV News and check out our website at SUTVNews.org. We're back with ship news and more tomorrow, but until then, good night.